How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the importance of running the proper shear bolts in your snowblower's auger. So let's get right into it. So in front of me today, I have a Craftsman 13 and a half horsepower, 27 inch snowblower, and it's already been fully serviced. If you'd like to see how I service snowblowers, you're more than welcome to check out the video that I will link in the top right of your screen titled, How to Service a Snowblower. Today's video, we're going to be focusing on the shear bolts or shear pins that go into the front of the auger. Because if you don't run the proper shear bolt or shear pin, you could severely damage your gearbox. And we'll get into that on another snowblower that I have. But for now, I'll just go over quickly how shear bolts and shear pins work. Here is going to be your main auger. These are the auger fins and they slide over a shaft that is connected to the gearbox there. Now in behind that gearbox is your second stage and the second stage is connected via a shaft to the gearbox right here. Now I have in front of me a second stage and main drive shaft from a Cub Cadet that we're working on and here is a worm gear that it meshes on. So basically the way that this works is there's going to be a pulley on the back of your second stage shaft here. When you engage your auger handle, what happens is the idler pulley pushes in against the belt, putting tension on the belt and bringing your engine's rotation down to the second stage shaft right there. Now that starts spinning this little gear right there on the end of that shaft, which then meshes up against this worm gear here. Now the difference between these two are, this is a hardened steel and these worm gears are usually made out of brass. We'll get to that in a moment. For now, you just have to understand that that shaft and the gearbox and the shaft inside of here always wants to remain spinning. And that rotation is then transferred to these auger fins via your shear bolts right here. Now, shear bolts are bolts that are designed to break away once something jams up against one of these auger fins. But just briefly to explain, a shear bolt is a bolt that has these little grooves cut in them. Those are weak spots and they are designed to shear. So that top right there is designed to break away if you get a big chunk of ice jammed up in your auger fins. Now, I recently did a video on how to remove a flywheel from a lawnmower, and the idea of a flywheel key is almost the same as these shear pins. So the flywheel keys are made to shear if you hit something, let's say you hit a root with your lawnmower, the blade and the crankshaft of the engine comes to a stop, but the momentum of the flywheel wants to keep spinning. So the flywheel key shears to allow the flywheel to keep spinning so that you don't damage your engine. These shear bolts are pretty much the same idea, except it's a little backwards. So let's say that this auger is spinning at full RPM and a big chunk of ice goes in here and jams up against this auger fin. What's going to happen is coming down to the shear bolt there, that shear bolt is going to shear, which will allow this auger fin to stay stationary in a jammed up position, but it will allow the rest of the unit, let's say this auger fin and the entire shaft in here to keep spinning. And that will also allow the worm gear and the worm shaft to keep spinning as well. So why am I showing you this particular snowblower? Well, my customer brought it into me and he just had normal bolts installed into the auger here. We've gone ahead and installed some shear bolts that are specifically designed for this snowblower. So those are the OEM replacements. And again, that is to protect the gearbox. So getting back to this gear being softer brass material than the hardened steel worm shaft, this one came out of a snowblower that had bolts in the auger instead of shear bolts. So what happened was the whole system jammed up. And what that does is it transfers all of that force, all of that momentum from this spinning auger back into the internals of the gearbox. And if hardened steel ever gets in a fight with a softer brass, the hardened steel will always win. And this is the outcome 
of running normal bolts instead of shear bolts. You can see that's supposed to be a perfect hole right there and it's just completely ovaled out. The gear has broken away. There were chunks of it inside of the gearbox. And just how much force there is when you don't run proper shear bolts will be quite surprising. You're gonna notice that we have here a brand new worm gear and also brand new gearbox side plates there. So that's your entire gearbox once it bolts together. So there was so much force from not running proper shear bolts that not only did the gear completely, basically just explode, but it shrapneled out parts and that shaft now was not in line with this gear and it ended up wobbling around. It completely destroyed the bearing at the rear of the housing and also cracked and destroyed the gearbox housing, which is just made of cast aluminum, which is also soft. So for this particular snowblower, we had to go out and buy two brand new gearbox housings. We had to buy a new brass worm gear as well, and we had to go and clean up this shaft. And to do work like that is going to be very expensive for a customer to pay because not only are you going to be paying big bucks in parts, but I quote a minimum of two hours on a job like this to repair an auger gearbox. Now, the reason why I quote a minimum of two hours to go ahead and repair a snowblower gearbox is because first you have to separate the auger housing from the back half of the snowblower. That in and of itself is normally an easy job. The second step, which gets a lot harder, is we have to remove the internal auger assembly. That's the first and second stage. And we have to take that out of the auger housing. Now, removing the auger assembly from the auger housing has proven to be quite difficult in the past because you have to remember there's going to be a main auger bearing that attaches itself to the back of this shaft as well as the pulley. So what happens a lot of times is because these snowblowers run in the wintertime, snow is wet, a lot of these parts get corroded on to one another because there's just a lack of lubrication. So what happens is first we have to remove the pulley and the pulley can sometimes seize to the shaft, which means we have to use special tools such as a flywheel puller to get that pulley off of that shaft. Next up comes removing the bearing, which could be even more difficult as a lot of times the bearings inner race seizes onto the impeller shaft there and sometimes we've had to cut them off using a zip disc on a grinder or use heat from our torch so you're using a lot of tools and it's a very time consuming job now once you do get the auger assembly removed from the auger housing the disassembly is quite straightforward and if you'd like to see a video on me doing that i can link that in the top right of your screen it's a two-part video that will take you through all of the steps needed to go ahead and separate the auger housing from the back half of the machine and then completely disassemble replace the parts it covers reassembly and then in the end of the two-part series i show you the fruits of the labor which is the snowblower once again working so getting back to the main focus of this video, which is going to be the shear bolt, as I mentioned, not only do you want to make sure that you're running a shear bolt to begin with, but you want to make sure that you're running the proper one. And that means that these little weak points here are at the proper spot. So normally, let's say you had a one inch inner shaft on your auger assembly there. Ideally, you would want a shear bolt with those little cutouts one inch apart. That way, when your auger fins here get jammed up with something, that top part and that bottom part are gonna shear away. And then this little intersection is just simply going to drop out or it may even stay in there depending on if you lubricate them. And that's gonna be the next thing we talk about here. Now on a lot of snowblowers, you're going to see these little grease fittings here. You can see that we've gone ahead and pack those full of grease. What you wanna do if you have shear bolts installed is you wanna remove them. Go ahead and hook up your grease gun and pump grease into it as you're spinning the auger fin around. And that will allow that grease to travel down the entire shaft so that if you ever have to disassemble this, these will just slide off once you get your auger assembly out and you won't have to worry about these corroding in place. The second thing that that does is it's also going to pump grease into the hole where your shear pin or shear bolt is going to go through. Because if they seize into place, they may not properly shear. Now on the topic of properly shearing, 
This part will only apply to a shear bolt, but you wanna make sure that when you install your shear bolt that they're loose. So you wanna be able to go ahead and turn your shear bolt inside of there. You don't want them to the point where they're rattling around completely, but you don't want to treat this shear bolt as a normal bolt and crank this thing right down tight. Because if you do go ahead and over tighten it, what it'll do is it'll compress the outer edges of this auger fin here and then if you do go ahead and hit something that will act as a bolt and it will hold that auger fin onto the auger shaft there and it won't shear properly which means you're going to damage the internals of your gearbox there and last but not least on top of a lot of these auger belt covers you're going to notice they have these little compartments here if you go up to the top of it you can open them up and inside are going to be your spare shear bolts and pins. Now, inside of that plastic bag there were the bolts that my customer had installed inside of that auger. And it's clear to see that these are bolts and not shear pins, as you can already see that they've started to bend. So this means that my customer has hit something in the past. And not only are these just regular bolts here, but we don't know what grade of bolt they are. This one, is just a Robinson head there on it. So getting into the grade of bolts, you could have a grade five, six, seven, or eight bolt. And of those mentioned, a grade eight bolt is going to be the strongest. Depending on how strong of a bolt you put in, that may never shear. And again, you're just gonna damage your gearbox. So we went ahead and installed the proper OEM replacement shear bolt for this unit. We ran the part number and this is the Stenz equivalent here. And the part number for that particular shear pin is going to be a Stenz 780-201. They come in shop packs, so we buy them by bulk. As you guys can see, we have all different kinds of shear pins and shear bolts here for various snowblowers that we work on. This one here has a locking nut on the end of it and a lot of times you'll see either it's going to be that pressed in lock nut or it'll be a nylock nut but for the most part all shear bolts and pins are designed to break away to save your auger gearbox assembly and lastly i just wanted to take a second to show you what an actual shear pin looks like so they're basically designed the same you have those weak points designed into them enabling them to shear but instead of being held on by a nut they're normally held on by some type of spring clip on the bottom. And that's pretty much it for, you know, talking about shear pins and shear bolts. That basically covers everything you need to know. You know, once again, don't go and run normal bolts in there because I showed you guys what can happen to a gearbox if you don't go ahead and run proper shear bolts that are slightly loose and just have that little bit of rotation to them. So again, use the proper shear bolts and don't over tighten them. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Put your model number into Google and put parts diagram after it. And perhaps you can get the correct part number for your shear pins or shear bolts. Like I said, you wanna be running not just shear bolts, but the proper shear bolts for your piece of equipment. And that way you won't run into damaging a gearbox later on if you hit a piece of ice or get a rock or something from your driveway stuck into the auger. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.